you can see my screen. Uh, so yeah, what we're going to be going over today. Sorry, is there a question? Okay. So what we're going to be going over today is, um, yeah, we're looking at the flow of um, uh, Web3 DAP, um, which means from the start of uh, the contract um, up to like the final user interface, which would um, give us some functionality we'll be interacting with. Um, yeah, so uh, some of the blockchain reviews. Um, yeah, I saw the call yesterday was really good and um, everyone has a great understanding of the concepts already. Um, but yeah, so, but this are one of the core concepts of blockchain. Um, so consensus controls the addition of um, new blocks, um, which we'll see. Um, yeah, and we, it is sort of this trustless environment where we do not have to trust any middleman or any other person, but we have to trust the process. We have to trust the code. Um, um, and also data stays um, forever within the blockchain, um, which also gives us the additional functionality, uh, which makes it great for auditing. Um, yeah, uh, and the actions on the data are limited by smart contracts. Uh, yeah, and so smart contracts are, yeah, the contracts or the code that helps us um, solve those real world problems on the blockchain. Um, yeah, they prevent wrong additions of and manipulations of data and um, all smart contracts must execute the same way on all nodes. Um, yeah, so that would mean identical outputs. Uh, yeah, so that's the review. Um, and we're going to be using Flutter, but we're just going to be going over the basic flow. So you can uh, take this and yeah, we're going to be using Truffle and Flutter, um, but you can take this flow and uh, move it any towards any framework that you would like to. So let me share my, let me share my entire screen. So, yeah, so um, where, where do we start, right? Um, so we're, of course, going to start from the blockchain. Um, and so we already have that Ethereum blockchain where our decentralized application is going to lie, uh, to lie at the end. So let, let us start from scratch. Um, let me uh, bring back Ganache. Um, um, yeah. So, yeah, so we have that Ethereum blockchain that we that our decentralized application is going to interact with. And so Ganache is going to be acting as the local simulation blockchain, right? So let's start our Ethereum blockchain here. And so we have this blockchain that we're going to interact with, and we have this core addresses that make up that blockchain um, with specific balances. Um, so the next thing we did, um, I can actually open another uh, another terminal here. Uh, um, okay. So and the next thing we've talked about travel and how travel helps us. Um, in or our develop is our development environment and actually helps us um, from writing our code to 
actually deploying it, um, right? So, and yeah, so we've talked about Truffle being that development environment. And so, um, like, yeah, and we're going to build on top of Clutter. Uh, I think let me open another window as well because the code here uh, will be too much. So, yeah. So, like, my Flutter setup is, or my Flutter environment and my Flutter development setup is already done. And some of you might um, have it already, um, but that setup takes some time. So one approach that you can take would be um, if you're going to be building a mobile application and if it's not going to be web-based, you could use JavaScript. There are There is React Native. Uh, also, you could um, use the approach of developing a progressive web app. Um, yeah, but so uh yeah so let's call this uh academy demo yeah so this creates a, a new flutter product for us um which would have um which would have all the templates and the code that um our flutter app is going to use so this would be the basic skeleton. Um, yeah, and it would give this main.dart file, which um, in Python would be the, yeah, the main method if under name equals main and in Java, the actual main method as well um, that we can use to interact with. Uh, and so the next thing to do would be, yeah, we're using Flutter, so we have already set up Flutter. Um, and the next thing to do would be to initialize uh, a Truffle project here. Um, this Truffle is going to be what we're going to be um, using for our smart contracts. Um, and the basic core code starting point would be writing the smart contracts. And so we'd have this contract directory where we would write our solidity code, which we'll be using to interact with the blockchain with. Um, yeah, and we'd have this migrations file, which is sort of the deploy script um, that would be taking our code onto the blockchain. Um, yeah, and so all the files that you see um, here are mostly setups from this, this from setup of flutter and um from setup of truffle and so depending on the path that you're taking um you'll be using yeah different passes but yeah you start off with creating your local blockchain um choosing the approach that you're taking whether it's javascript um whether it's kotlin um using pure java um, or Flutter or any development environment. Um, and so I think we can come back here to avoid any errors and save some time. Um, and so what we have here is just a, a, a very simple contract, um, which just does one thing. Um, so we specify the solidity version and contract, um, you can think of it like the class alternative, those who come from um object oriented programming and so what this contract does is this contract has um a string variable um which is your name um and that name is going to be the state that is going to be stored on the blockchain um and so we have that state um and that state is going to be initialized um by the contractor as ten academy and our decentralized application is just going to be um, is just going to be interacting and providing a name from the front end and editing that name. Um, yeah. And so this is a, this is a simple contract we already have. 
Um, so our truffle is running at um, this specific uh, IP address and for it, this is the local IP I currently have. Uh, and so it is running at 8080. So let's, yeah, so this is already configured. Um, we already have the development environment set up uh, here to connect to properly to that blockchain. Um, and so what would be what we would be doing when we actually deploy to the mainnet is changing this host address to actually point to um, Ethereum's, Ethereum's actual address. Um, so yeah, so we have we we write our smart contract. Um, and, and so in the challenge, um, I think Martin gave a very good overview yesterday um, of what methods um, and what structure is actually going to be used. Um, yeah, but once we have that code plugged in, um, we would simply migrate, which would compile our smart contract code into the bytecode and actually um, deploy it um, onto our blockchain. And so if we see already, there are no transactions running. This is um, the current block is zero. Um, it's already at the Genesis block. And so there is currently nothing running and all our balances are at 100 ETH, right? Um, yeah. And so we have now, uh, we have now deployed our contract, our very simple contract with just, with just takes in a name and um, saves it over on the blockchain, um, right? So let's go over, let's go to our blockchain and see what has happened. So if we go over to the transactions, um, we actually see two contract creations and two contract calls, right? So we only wanted to deploy our transaction. We only wanted to deploy that simple smart contract. But um, what actually happens is um, the from address, which is this the initial address, which actually paid the gas that was used to interact with it, um, actually paid an initial contract creation. And this contract creation is actually um, an initial contract which we found um, if we go to our MT1, this migrations.sol, which is another contract that is actually used by Truffle to actually manage migrations um, onto the blockchain. So it's a contract which um, already does some things. And so that contract creation um, actually happens. Um, and that, that contract is, um, now created at this specific contract address. Um, yeah, and it is at this specific contract address. And the hello world contract that we actually wanted to deploy over um, is now the second contract creation call, the, which is this one over here. Um, and so that contract is now created by Truffle. Um, and that contract call is the one that is actually used to set our, to set our, to set our name on the state. Um, and so that's why we see the four transactions there. And if you see um, right now, each transaction is actually mined in its own block and so each of the transactions actually increases the block count, um, which sets the current block to four. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and so you can, if you go over to each of the transactions, you'd see um, the block hash and the different information that you see here. Um, yeah, so we're sort of done with the, backend logic, right? So we already have uh, a contract and we've deployed it to our, to our blockchain. So after we've deployed our contract to the blockchain, um, if you've 
went over and seen any any things of any things on Remix or other things, you can interact. There are various ways you can interact um, with that blockchain and with that contract. Uh, yeah, and we're going to be using Flutter uh, for that. So here in Flutter, um, this is the core contract linking part. And so the RPC URL is the URL we're using to interact with the blockchain. And that can also be provided via, via a web socket. Um, and so the and so the method that we're actually going to be using right now is um, we already have that contract and that contract already has uh, a name which is um, which is already set to yeah which is already set to ten academy and so the interaction with that contract would now be there is. There's only one method actually supported by that contract, right? Um, which is that set name method. And so what we can do is we can be happy. Um, we can just leave Ten Academy as it is, um, or we can provide an, a, we can provide a new name uh, via our interface um, via Flutter at the moment, and actually change that name. Uh, right, so the yeah the modifier is set to public, which means we yeah any account address can actually call it. And so this is not the proper way of doing things, but just for the demo. Um, so any balance, any account over that blockchain can interact with that contract and change that name. So let's get a private key from any of the accounts. Um, set it here. Um, and so the Web3 client is actually the client, um, the is the library that we're going to be using to interact with the blockchain. And so um, each implementation will have um, its own library to interact with it. Um, for Python, there will be Web3.py, um, I think ethers.js for JavaScript. Um, and this is for Dart. So you're going to uh, have to look for the specific implementation for the language that you're going to have, that you're going to be using. Um, and so we get that client. Um, and so um, the API is, and the first method that we're actually implementing here is the getting the ABI, which is the application binary interface, um, which actually is sort of like um, the API, but on a more lower level, and which would allow this um, higher level languages to actually properly interact with uh, the Ethereum blockchain properly. Um, so we get that API, and this credentials is just setting that private key and it allows us to get the name from the front end um, and actually set it and make a transaction call to that contract to actually pass in that uh, name to that contract. And so, yeah, so that is the that is exactly the case so you're going to have to read the documentation of whatever wrapper that you're going to be using and um, it is going to be making um, that specific function call to that blockchain um they're, they're doing lower level abstractions you can go and look over the code and i think most of you have already seen um and already interacted um using like uh, pure JavaScript code um, and like watching the long code that you have to write and it, it is great. This abstraction that they provide um, really helps us uh, go along. Yeah. And so now that we have that, uh, 
think it's the application is already running. Um, let me join by my phone. Couldn't figure out a way to actually share it, so. Okay, so let's restart it actually since we've restarted the blockchain. Um, I'm not sure if I can present things at the same time. Uh, but yeah, let's let me try and share my screen. Um, So, yeah, and so, yeah, so this would be our decentralized application, um, which would be saying hello, 10 Academy. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see the second one as well. Um, Everyone can see the application now, right? Um, yeah, so I think everyone can see the application. So this is now um, at the moment saying hello Ten Academy. Um, and so if I change this name to John and set name, what this is going to be doing is um, this is going to be doing a call back to the yeah, this this is going to be giving this is going to be providing a call back to the blockchain and uh setting the name to john okay so yeah it says hello john now so um let me go back and start sharing uh start sharing my computer screen and so we have provided the private key. So this would be the private key of the employee, right? In the, in the, in the, in the implementation that you're going to be doing, this is going to be the private key of the employee account, which is going to be sending um, that location or attitude and the specific um, arguments that are required by the smart contract. Um, and so if we go to this account, this account should have now made this call, right? This should this account should have made this set name call, which has changed the state of uh, this variable um, inside of that contract from 10 Academy now to John. Um, so if I go now and take a look at the transactions, um, there has been a contract call. Uh, there is a new contract call, which is this one from this specific address to the uh, Hello World contract that we had deployed. So this this specific call has now changed that um, this state of the blockchain. Um, and so if we take a look at, yeah, this was the account. If we take a look at the transaction account, 
um, there is now one transaction. Um, it is definitely significant, um, the change that we had to see here because um, contract creation calls, um, if you see the gas that was used by, yeah, if you see the gas that was used, um, this contract call actually used uh, 29,054 gas, um, but the contract creation, as you can see, was um, almost 10 times of that. Um, yeah, and also the contract creation that was used by, the gas that was used by the contract creation of um, truffle was also um, very significant. Um, and so that is the, the flow of the the flow of the blockchain we have our blockchain um it will be yeah we have our we have our blockchain um we would then go on to write our smart contract or um create the scaffold of what whatever framework that we're going to be using um in our case right now which was javascript um, and so we would deploy our contract um, and we would take, um, yeah, we would deploy our contract and we would use whatever framework that we're using to go on and interact with that smart contract and um, change the state of it. Um, yeah, uh, I think that was it. Uh, it would be hard to go over every little details of the code because everyone's going to have different implementations and um, understanding Dart uh, would definitely take a long time uh, for people who are uh, not familiar or, yeah. But I think this is the, the flow of getting our decentralized application live. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to take them. It seems people came without to listen. Is that the case? Go on, Dr. Sir. Hey, hello. Hey. How are you? Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I need to ask uh, Azaria something, if it is possible. Yeah. Okay, may maybe uh, from the <coughs> mobile app side. Is the code is going to integrate on the same on the same directory? Uh, you, you are using Flutter, yeah? Um, yeah. Uh, okay. For example, I am doing on uh, uh, the same the same setup. Just I am using Traffic. And uh, how do we integrate here? Maybe hint just for a few to help um, us much to uh, to save our time. Uh, um, yeah, so um, you, the directory actually doesn't matter. So um, here we set it up by um, we have we we're using the same directory setup, but it can definitely be different. You can initialize your um, you can initialize your traffic project in inside a subdirectory, and it really doesn't matter. So um, when we do um, truffle migrate, um, we actually have outputs that are actually provided by um, that are actually provided by the contracts, right? Um, so that provided output is actually what we're um, going to be using. So in Prospector YAML. Um, we have this artifact added as assets. Um, so I think it would be easier if I go over the initial one and actually, um, yeah. 
So if we do a travel migrate here. Um, so if we do a uh, okay, so yeah, it's running at a different port. Um, uh, where's So if we go over and migrate into that, um, what is happening? Okay. It's running at 88. Um, yeah, so uh, technically, yeah, we only have the migrations file from uh, the migrations contract from uh, Solidity, but we would have this, um, we'd have this generated JSON file, right? Um, and so you have this um, ABI, which has um, that core information um, about your contract. Um, and so you would take out this um, ABI list um, and actually, um, okay, yeah, so actually use the entire name. Yeah, but it is actually interacting with this ABI format inside of inside of the contract um, yeah and so you're going to take that um, JSON file and um, that, that that's that specific JSON file is going to be uh, the one the web3 client of flutter is actually going to be interacting with okay thank you uh, but uh, how we connect together I mean how we set up uh, the that one with uh, with travel. Uh, I the the coding part is actually it is uh, okay, but what I need is how do we integrate the Flutter with uh, our developing environment together? For example, here there is a library folder, yeah. Yeah. So how do how do we integrate that one? Um, so. The, so there are two separate things like um so flutter is the ui library right so you can yeah it's ha it's more or less this is like um having both the back end and the front end um at the same place um inside of the same directory uh, so you can't you you're writing solidity code here but you're um writing Dart code uh, for the front end, right? Okay, right. Yeah. Maybe, maybe uh, this uh, this uh, LIB folder, um, is it really going to create power by ourselves or? No, this, this LIB folder is created when we create the template by Flutter, right? So okay. when we when we initialize the Flutter project, it creates yeah. this lib directory, which is um, where our main uh, Dart file is found, which is sort of the entry point, which is the entry point um, for our Flutter application, right? Um, and so we already have that. Uh, we already have that file when we went on and created our Flutter project. Uh, so if, yeah, it's, it's okay. Yeah, I used this like yeah when I created the new Flutter project, all of that was provided, and when I initialized that Truffle project, it gave us uh, the contracts file and um, the migrations file, which was which Truffle was using. So like, 
Yeah. So another approach would have been to use a subdirectory. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That one I need to know. Yeah, and thank you, Henok. I'm sorry, but I couldn't actually. I had a hard time uh, installing uh, screen coffee, and so that was why I didn't use it today. Um, but yeah, I think we can. Uh, yeah. yeah, thanks. Thanks, Azaria. I think that hopefully people have a better idea now. So, and then they dis continue discussion on Slack. Thanks. Yeah, um, if anyone has any questions, you can let me know um, here or uh, I think, yeah, uh, or through IP. Um, yeah, and I'll definitely have a look at uh, your, your question, Henok. No one has any questions. Uh, have a great rest of your day.